So with that, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker tonight. We're so pleased to have Calgary-based fashion stylist Julie Roth here tonight to share her tips and tricks on how to dress professionally. She's a perfect, fight for for perfect fit for tonight's topic. Julie's always looking for ways to make the most of her clothing. Versatility has become one of her favorite words when it comes to fashion, and she lives by the mentality that fashion can and should be fun without having to break the bank. Julie was named one of Avenue Calgary's 2020 Best Dressed for her unapologetically bold outfit, which is a true expression of her personality. And as you all might be able to tell, Julie's also expecting her first child in the coming months, so she'll have lots of fun to play dress up. Winners has a great baby, as sort of I hear. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to kick it off to Julie. Thank you so much, Libby. I really appreciate that introduction and just want to thank you all for being here with me this evening. This is honestly a true, true honor to be here. Thank you to everyone who is joining. I see all of these participants coming up. It's very overwhelming in such a positive way. Uh, thank you to the Dress for Success Canada and TJX Canada teams for having me. I think this is, this is a really unique opportunity to be able to be together across Canada right now, even in the midst of the world that we are in right now. So I just wanted to take a second to acknowledge that and thank you all very much. So as Libby said, I'm Julie Roth and I'm gonna get into it. So the first thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to your professional wardrobe is confidence. Confidence is key to simply put it, right? Studies have actually shown that clothing comfort can reduce stress, which is fantastic, can actually also have a positive impact on your cognitive performance too. So that is really cool. So what I want to say in terms of when you are sorting out your professional attire is look for clothing and accessories that are comfortable, that fit you right, that you can wear all day, because then what's going to happen is your confidence is going to shine through. Of course, don't forget your smile and strut your stuff. But when I'm talking about things that fit right, I mean, you can all raise your hand at home. <laughs> um, but how many of you have worn something that is too big or too small and you're fidgeting with it? It's really taking the attention away from what we're doing. I think like specifically a lot of times like liners and blazers that are too tight and we feel like we can't put our arms down or raise our arms to tight shoes. That's another big one when they're pinching by the end of the day and we're walking like Bambi, well, that's not going to help with our, our confidence level and be able to actually perform our duties. So starting us off, we we'll want to talk about confidence. And I guess I'll just check in quickly, Libby, are there any questions on um, our first topic? Sorry, I didn't catch anything. We might be breaking the internet. <laughs> I'm not sure uh, what's happening <laughs> with Libby. Um, <laughs> it's okay. There I'm taking this as a good thing. Kim Kardashian was the last person who broke the internet. So if we yeah. can do it, that's pretty cool. <laughs> exactly. Um, I will say to everyone, Thank you so much for saying hello in the chat, but please just keep the chat um, for questions just so we're not clogging up the chat. Um, there was a couple though that I did see. Um, I'm just taking a look right now as, as well, Cassie. Um, hi everyone, it's nice to see everybody here. Um, doesn't look like anything specific around what we just kicked off with Julie. So I think we move on and then um, we'll touch base uh, after our next Perfect. topic. Sounds great. Well, I will head into hair and makeup then. So this is another important discussion for your professional look. So when you are 
prepping your attire and your wardrobe, I would definitely recommend to opt for more natural looks when it comes to hair and makeup. And this includes nails and fragrances as well. I mean, you're probably not going to show up to an interview with a smoky eye and like a super dark lip. I mean, there's definitely a time and place for that. Um, but maybe that is not going to be the place. Same thing. Maybe it's more neutral nail polish colors, probably not the neons or, you know, making sure that they're not chipped. I've certainly been in settings where I've had a chipped nail, nail and that's all I can focus on and I start picking at it, probably not the most professional thing for me to do, um, but we've been there. And also just checking um, corporate policies on fragrances, and this includes body lotions and perfumes as well. A lot of companies actually don't allow it because there are allergies. So just be cognizant of it. That being said though, your beauty routine, it does not have to be boring. We can still have fun with it. And there might be a time and a place where it makes sense for you to try out that new red lipstick or red nail polish that you, that you just got. Uh, but if you are looking for a little bit, you're feeling maybe stuck and you want something fresh, my biggest tip is to hit up the old reliable interweb and start researching some tutorials. Even, you know, it doesn't have to be specific to, you know, workplace makeup. It could be, you know, just an inspiration video on, you know, how to do your eyebrows or where to put your blush. So things like that, check out YouTube and Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok. I think all the kids are using the TikTok these days. I'm not entirely sure, but there's a ton of references at your fingertips. And I urge you to definitely use that to get creative with your um, hair and makeup for your, your professional wardrobe. Just check in with the team again here to see if there's anything that's come through for questions. Um, <laughs> there is um, a few. Um... Do you want just makeup specific right now? Sure. Yeah. Let's start with that. Okay. Um, it says, do I need to wear lipstick, um, lip color or makeup to be considered professional? Definitely not. No, I think that there is, again, we're opting for natural looks. So if that is what you feel most comfortable with is not wearing makeup, then that is definitely suitable to what your professional look is going to be for yourself and just be confident in that as well. I think society, we put a lot of pressure on our image. So just be confident in not having to wear, wear makeup. Okay. Um, this one is a really good question for the times is how do, can I make my eyes pop while wearing a mask? Ooh, that's a great question. Okay. For this one, I'm definitely going to refer to those online tutorials that I was referencing before. Um, I know that there's a lot right now, especially with the masks on different ways to make your eyes pop. Um, a big thing is what I'm seeing in trends right now is eyebrows too. And then, you know, this might be actually a good opportunity for you to play around with a little bit of color. And it doesn't have to be something that is considered unprofessional. You know, if you're used to wearing black eyeliner, maybe you try a brown or a blue, something like that. So definitely have a little bit of fun with it and allow, um, allow the creativity to shine through, especially with the masks being the newest accessories. Oh, and then one last is kind of like not makeup related, but um, am I, I'm comfortable wearing colorful wigs because I'm bald. Can I wear colored wigs and dress professionally at the same time? I think absolutely. I think there's definitely a place for if you were wearing a wig that if that is something that has become a part of your image, I think there's definitely a way to maintain professionalism with your attire as you're, as you're wearing it. Um, if, if it is ever a concern for you though, I would just have a conversation with someone in your office about it, maybe someone on management. Um, but I think that is, that is a part of your individuality as well. And I think that's important to have that shine through. Okay. And then, um, last question, um, I think we'll do is 
what are just some essential makeup um, items that we should have? Essential makeup items. Um, I'm just thinking about what's in my makeup kit right now. I think something for me that's become essential, especially on this age of digital meetings and things like that, um, something for eyebrows. I think that is, that's always my go-to. Um, I would say in terms of your makeup bag, a, and I'm, I'm speaking from Calgary here, I've closed the blinds so you can't see how much it's snowing, but it's very dry here. So a wonderful moisturizer too. Um, and I also think that uh, something that's good to kind of keep on hand are those little um, wipes that we can use to get rid of, of the shine. I think those are kind of good sort of go-to things to have on hand especially in Calgary. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. Perfect. Um, okay. Head on to the next one. Okay. So I'm going to talk quickly about interview and daily outfit tips and tricks before I get into some of the pieces here. I'm sure we're eagerly awaiting. <laughs> um, but if you can, my biggest tip is to actually carve out some time the night before, especially for an interview or, or heading to work to put together your, your look. I kind of liken this to making your lunch beforehand. So do the same thing with your outfit. This is going to allow you to see if there's any stains or snags or loose threads or things like that. And it's also gonna keep your morning routine as zen as possible because it's one less thing that you have to think about when we are rushing to meetings and doing multiple things. So I have a couple of tips that I just want to run through. And this is both specific to interview and daily, daily outfits. Um, so of course, in an interview setting, you're going to do as much research about the dress code and the company as, as possible, following all the guidelines. Again, going back to my first point of confidence, find those clothes that you feel confident in, especially in an interview setting so that you can focus on your tasks. Use your best judgment. Try not to overthink it. If there is something where you're, you're bordering, is this professional or is it maybe a little too risque? It might be. So just err on the side of caution for sure. And on that note, avoid revealing clothing. So I'm going to talk about undergarments uh, right away too. Select clothing as well that accommodates the weather. And I know that this sounds funny. I am Every time I leave the house, I check my weather app. Uh, in the summer, I always dress for the UV index because this is important. I mean, especially for those of you who are in Alberta, you know, we're across Canada right now, um, but I'm familiar with the Alberta climate. So making sure that we have the appropriate outerwear and footwear so that we're prepared upon arrival. Again, checking for snags, little threads, even pet hair. That's, that's a big one to acknowledge as well. Um, ensuring that your clothing is pressed, wrinkle-free. So try to stay away from those fabrics that, you know, you may iron and then the second you sit down, they're wrinkled. And I'm, I'm unfortunately going to uh, call out linen. Can everyone hear me again? Is that okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Um, so yes, unfortunately, calling out linen as a nasty, unpressable fabric there. Um, and then again, selecting your outfit the night before this, this truly just allows again for an organized morning and harmony. <laughs> Julie, we have it's Libby. Can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> I'm, I'm apologize. I think we did break the internet there for a minute, <laughs> or at, at least my internet. Um, we did have a question, um, and it's a bit specific, but is a full suit, so a matching jacket and blazer, is that considered outdated now and not fashionable? Or maybe how would you, Julie, um, suggest wearing a suit? So if maybe bringing back to life a suit that might have been, hang might have been hanging in the closet for a bit. Definitely. That's a great question. And I personally do not think that a matching suit is by any means outdated. And I think even if potentially, and I don't know, I'm just ass assuming if we're thinking, like, I don't know how long it's been hanging in your closet for, maybe it has shoulder pads. Well, those are actually coming back into style right now, which I'm very happy about. Um, I am gonna talk a little bit about suiting as we move on, but what I love is to be able to recognize that a matching suit can be worn in multiple ways. We have pants and a blazer that can be worn together 
or as separates, of course, too. And if you are looking to just update it, I would just look it over first as you're preparing it and making sure, you know, does it, does this need to be cleaned? Does it need to have a lint roller on it? Does it need to be pressed? Something like that, because that can actually help update a piece immensely. Okay. Let's keep going. Cause I know you're going to cover some of the questions that <laughs> are, are, are coming in the feed. So perfect. These are great questions though. Um, mm. I'm going to jump into undergarments next and I'm laughing because I have I have an embarrassing story. It's, it's my own embarrassment that I'm gonna tell you after. Um, but what I wanna suggest is gearing towards neutral colored undergarments. So this is going to help you avoid any unwanted shadows, lines, creases. And my biggest tip for this is check your outfit with your undergarments in different lighting. Um, so that you can really see if there's any distractions. Take a photo of yourself with the flash on too. This is going to ensure that again, there's no distractions. Um, I wanna talk about a couple of pieces that, that are good to have on hand. I mean, slips and slip dresses for skirts. These are great, all in neutral colors here as well. Um, we also have some, some cami options in neutral colors. These are great layering pieces too. For instance, look at this gorgeous blouse that we have. But right away we can see that with the fabric, we can already see the hanger shining through on this. So I might layer one of these camis underneath it. See this one's even, it says layer me. You might not be able to see that. It's asking mm -hmm. to be layered. <laughs> but um, So these are great pieces to have for uh, undergarment options. Another one that is great is a bodysuit as well. Now it doesn't have to be one specific to this with the turtleneck. I just chose this option because I think it is a, another great layering piece, especially as we get into um, tops. And why I want to point out bodysuits too is if you're like me and you really like that full professional like secured tuck, well this is going to keep everything in. And if you don't want a bodysuit, my small tip, it's kind of funny, might sound crazy, bear with me, but I've done this before and it works, I swear. Stick your top into your underwear, just tuck it in and it works, it's great, keeps everything in. Um, but before we move on, I'm, I'm gonna share this embarrassing story of myself because I would like this to just be a lesson <laughs> to everyone going back to neutral undergarments. So I was doing um, a television segment in Vancouver and I was so focused on the looks that we were presenting that I kind of forgot to check my own look. And I put my outfit on and my friend pulled me aside and said, essentially, I can see your bum. <laughs> I was mortified. So, I mean, we did have a saving grace that the, the studio lighting worked out well, but for me, I was wearing neutral underwear. So it, it saved us. So please, once again, let my embarrassment be the lesson about undergarments. <laughs> Julie, do you have any, uh, it's kind of in the same breath, but tights, like should, is it neutral tights, dark tights, colored tights? What's your take Absolutely. on tights? Great question. I love tights. I have some here for us as well. Um, so I think having those neutral colors are always really, really important, especially in like the winter months, if we do have to wear a dress and you don't want to go you know, bare legged. So, you know, keeping, you can do sheer or opaque, you can go a little bit darker. But what I love about tights and, and pantyhose and, and stockings and everything is that we can have a little bit of fun with these too. So this is an opportunity for you. Um, and I know this is kind of a double standard because I'm saying stay neutral, um, but with pantyhose and, and tights specifically, it allows us the opportunity to actually accessorize. So maybe this is where you pull in a cool print or a color just to sort of accent your, your outfit. Nice. Okay. Let's keep moving. Awesome. Okay. Mm. So I'm going to move into tops now and the best way to utilize them. So tops are a super easy way to get creative with our outfits, which is amazing. So they're great for layering. They're going to keep us you know, comfortable in cooler temperatures, but it also gives us an opportunity to stay fresh with different pairings, right? And, you know, have fun. Don't be afraid to mix and match is basically what I'm saying. I think we're so used to going with what we're comfortable with and what we know works that we forget that we can 
actually switch it up. So for instance, maybe you want to use that bodysuit and pair it underneath this beautiful mint sweater here. Or, you know, we have this sweater that can be worn on its own, but to inject a little bit of, of texture, we can just simply add a blouse underneath it, right? And it's gonna totally change up our look here. Just to have something extra. Can everyone see that there? Yeah. And then if we wanted to throw a blazer over top of it as well. Right? So these are great options to have fun and play around with. You know, I urge you to try it out. The next time you're getting ready for your next Zoom meeting or, you know, maybe down the road an in-person meeting, try out a different equation. I mean, we have tank tops, t-shirts, blouses, sweaters, cardigans, blazers. There's so many different alternatives. Now, it might not always work and you might not feel right about mixing and matching patterns, but I definitely urge you to try it out for sure. So really reimagining your pieces. And, and what I love about tops as well is this is a great opportunity for us to manage our professional wardrobe budget. We can really stretch our dollar if we're doing, if we're interchanging these pieces and reimagining them. I mean, we might be able to get away with purchasing more tops and then investing a little bit more in something such as, you know, a blazer or a pair of shoes, for instance. We've got a lot of questions about blazers, which I think is your next tip. So it's a very good yes. segue. Questions about, I think, Perfect. are blazers and jeans appropriate? And maybe that depends on, on the, uh, the dress code, but. Yes, absolutely. Can I dive into blazers next? Is that okay then? D dive in. Perfect. Okay. Yes, blazers are totally acceptable to wear with jeans. I mean, once again, you're checking your corporate, um, corporate policies and, and dress codes and everything, but blazers, in my opinion, are a staple. I love them. They're an easy, easy way to go from work to weekend as well while staying chic and making your outfit feel cute and elevated. So, you know, we may have our blazer during the week with our dress pants or even a pair of denim and a top. But what I want to urge you to do is take your blazer to the weekend, try it out, swap it out for, yeah, if you haven't already worn the denim with it, try it with the denim and a t-shirt, or maybe it's a crew neck underneath. I'm going to say um, reimagine a lot in this session. So reimagine how you can wear this blazer. Can it be worn as outerwear as well on the weekend for you? Um, I also want to point out, and I'm going to kind of talk about suiting to that question that we had earlier too, but I didn't bring any, you know, I, I went a little bit bolder for us today because I really want to push you out of your fashion comfort zone a little bit. So I don't have a matching black blazer and dress pant here. I have this pink one. This is another great option. This is still a neutral and pairs very easily with pieces that you have here. Look at this. We can just just want to show you a little sparkle, of course, any opportunity I can get to do that. Um, but then to the suiting point as well. So this one is a little bit bold. I know, but bear with me. So why I want to talk about this is because the colors are still very neutral in it, in fact. So again, this is a great weekend piece and the dress pants can be worn on their own. But look at this, we can still have a little bit of fun here. And this is gonna be great with a pair of denim as well. So we're still maintaining that professional image while utilizing a very chic and timeless silhouette for our wardrobe, for our professional wardrobe. A couple questions, Julie. Yeah. So you say timeless, what are your thoughts on a double-breasted blazer? I love it. Because I <laughs> Me think, too. <laughs> I love it personally because then I think it actually allows, I think the double breasted allows us to actually be able to utilize the blazer more as say a coat, mm -hmm. for instance. Um, I think, I don't think that there's, I really have nothing to say that's negative about a double, double breasted blazer. Um, 
Same. I think they're flexible yeah. <laughs> too. You can, if they're a little bit on the bigger side, like if it's something maybe from that's a, a few years or even decades old, you could belt it, you know, like it, they're very exactly. versatile. <laughs> totally. And, and even being able to pair, like, I'm just going to grab, um, I'm going to grab this one. So even just being able to take your blazer and like, this is a jumpsuit that I have here, being able to pair it with that or a dress and just, it kind of just creates this like effortless feel without, you know, overthinking it, but it's still super professional. Professional and chic. Um, Another question is, can your top be longer than your blazer? Can your top be longer than your blazer? I don't think that there's any hard and fast rules about that. I'm, I'm trying to think in in many instances I have had um, a longer top, I mean, you may want to consider, like, if it's a cropped blazer, you may want to consider tucking that top in. Um, but I sort of liken that to what it would look like if you're wearing a dress with a blazer, mm-hmm. for instance. Okay. Um, and then some questions kind of back to your um, talk about tops, but are there any um, hard and fast rules around mixing colors so, or colors and patterns? Stripes, polka dots, like, is there any rule to follow. That's a great question. I I have to say right now in fashion, I don't think that there's any hard and fast rules, which makes me so happy to just be alive in this fashion world. Um, I I think, you know, there, there are some instances where if you're trying it out, it may not, um, it may not translate as professionally. So, um, but for instance, like just going back to this, this floral, um, blouse here paired with the, the plaid blazer. I mean, we can have fun. And I guess what I would recommend is if you're doing prints and and color matching, um, try to pull in from the colors, especially if it's something that you're not familiar with doing, uh, try to pull in from, from the neutrals and make those pairings happen. But, um, you know, and I'm even going to reference this when we talk about accessories, like there's no, you know, we can mix our metals now. And so I, I would say to you, have fun with it because yes, we, we want to maintain professional images. However, we want to also in, be able to inject some of our personality into it. Exactly. Okay. Um, another question, and it's more to do with the cut of the blazer. So if, if you are carrying a little bit of weight around your middle, what cut would you suggest? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, I would definitely urge you to try out different cuts of your blazer for sure. Um, you may find, and it, that's a that's a really great question um, <laughs> because because every designer, every trend, every blazer is going to fit you differently. So I kind of think about like trying on a wedding dress. You never know until you've tried it. So definitely try out different silhouettes. I mean, but also think, don't put too much pressure on yourself for the blazer and think that it has to be done up all the time. Blazers are very professional if they're still left open as well. And do you think a longer cut would elongate the line or is it better to have a shorter kind of boxier blazer? Yeah, I think there's definitely something to be said about a a long line blazer and Mm -hmm that is such a, a beautiful silhouette as well that can easily go from work to weekend, which I love. Um, I would definitely, definitely look for, for a long line blazer. And I have one in mind that I'm going to point out after as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's keep going. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to move into dresses. So dress the part and your favorite dress has now become multifunctional. And I know that might sound crazy. Julia dress is a dress, but it is not reimagine, right? Again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna show you this one. So we have this beautiful floral printed dress here, it has a nice hemline as well. And I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, that's a really nice spring summer dress, Julie. Yes, it is. It's still quite professional, but I'm going to make it seasonless really quickly and just throw on a sweater over top of it. So we're going back to mixing prints and patterns here, which is always fun. And just by simply adding this gorgeous knit sweater, we have now made it seasonless. So once again, reimagine those pieces because now we have a top and a skirt silhouette. So just think of 
I mean, we're talking about how much we're investing into our, our work wardrobes as well. And really, we want to make the most of our wardrobes. We want to make our pieces work for us. We want the price per wear to make sense. So really, again, reimagine, say it with me at home, <laughs> even though I can't hear you right now. But, <laughs> um, and then on the silhouette as, as well, I want to talk about skirts you know we're talking about injecting your personality as well I, I really do think that that is an important aspect of your professional wardrobe I mean and that can just be simply by adding a little bit of color here so we just have a pencil skirt in this gorgeous maroon color maybe you don't want to do so much color but I wanted to show you these as well so we're just creating a little bit of texture here this one is that houndstooth pleated print and then we have a faux leather pleated skirt as well. So again, neutral and versatile pieces that we're just utilizing and making the most of with. So taking your blouse here, it's still professional, but it's, it's kind of edgy. So if you're into that. <laughs> Julie, are there any specific lengths or guidelines thinking about the hem length of your uh, dress or your skirt? Absolutely. I think that is important in a professional manner, especially with when we're talking about dresses and skirts. Um, I would definitely suggest to aim for around the knees. So anything shorter, because what happens is as soon as we're in a skirt and we sit down, it automatically goes up, rides up a little bit. So Knee length is always gonna be a safe bet. Um, these two that I just showed you here, these are actually a midi length. And then something that you might wanna stay away from, and I'm just saying this based on purely experience, is maybe stay away from the maxis because um, of tripping hazards. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely been there, but yeah, knee length, you're always gonna have a safe bet with that. Good. We have a question about um, if you if you're in a wheelchair, are there different outfits or pieces or fabrics that would be best um, if you're in a wheelchair? I think if you were in a wheelchair and in terms of fabrics and styles, I think you can still absolutely have fun and interpret it however you'd like to and however you want to showcase your individuality in your professional wardrobe. There isn't anything that I would recommend staying away from in terms of like hemlines I would definitely consider the same thing for skirting and, and dresses consider something that's maybe a little bit longer um, but definitely stick to what is going to be comfortable for you great um, and then there's some questions about just different silhouettes um, if you are a bit bustier on top are there certain silhouettes you should that would maybe be better suited um, and any ideas there Julie yeah, I think, you know, I could talk about silhouettes and tops all day, truthfully. Um, in terms of just because it was brought up, if you are maybe a little bit bustier, um, when, you, when you're doing something like a button-up blouse, just be conscious of this area because what I, what I find is the buttons can sometimes gape. Um, another point on silhouettes, and I'm just kind of going back to um, our tops and layering pieces is maybe, you know, this is a beautiful top as well. Great silhouette with the sleeveless, but potentially in a professional setting, you may want to just err on the side of caution and pair it with, you know, something such as a cardigan, like as, like this one. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think of like different trends that are happening right now. I mean, it, it's, it's cool because there's so much that, you know, the puffy sleeve trend and ruffles and, and things like that. I mean, obviously stick to something that's not going to get in the way of your duties and, you know, catch on your coworker or something like that. Or, but um, yeah, I don't, sorry, I went off on a tangent now. <laughs> that's okay. I don't, I don't know if that answered the question. <laughs> Um, and, and what about um, women who might be more petite or shorter in height? Are there um, any tips or tricks for them in terms of 
uh, dressing? Definitely. That's, these are wonderful questions. And I think, again, I, I urge you to just try it out for sure. Um, I know that I have some friends, for instance, that are like, I will not wear a maxi dress. I'm too short. And I'm like, well, let's try it out. We might be able to tailor it or make it a little bit shorter for sure. Um, in terms of like thinking of pants, for instance, like maybe try out something that's a little bit higher waisted and then try out, you know, depending on, on your height, um, it may be, again, it's something that you're going to have to try and I urge you to try it, but try out something that's high waisted and maybe something that has a bit of a wider leg to it to, um, sort of increase the length of, of your torso and your legs as well. So. Okay. And one more, um, is there a way that you would suggest to help minimize broad shoulders? Minimize broad shoulders. Um, that's a great question as well. I think definitely what you're going to want to do is make sure that you're, you're fitting properly on top so that when you're putting your blazer on, can you, can you move properly? Does it feel comfortable? I think, you know, we may in a professional setting, regardless, probably staying away from things that are sleepless in this instance, because again, we want to make sure that we're maintaining professionalism, of course. Um, I would say too, though, try, try out. And again, this is me just pushing everyone out of their fashion comfort zone, but try out something that has potentially a bit of a flair or, you know, a cap sleeve, things like that. It's definitely going to, you know, give a different silhouette, but then you never know what it's going to look like or how it's going to make you feel. And then again, going back to that confidence, if it's making you feel good, you're going to walk, you're going to walk taller. Exactly. Okay. Um, okay. Let's keep moving. We still have some questions rolling in, but I think we'll probably get to some of them as, as we go along. So I don't want to hold Thanks. up. <laughs> okay. I'm going to quickly talk about, um, casual Friday and, uh, pants basically. So we love Fridays. They roll around every week and we can't wait until they get here. Um, so of course checking the company policy on casual Friday and if it's appropriate to be able to wear denim. Uh, but what I would recommend to do is stick with a darker wash of denim. So I just have a black pair of denim here and then a darker wash. So staying away from, you know, the trends, the distressing, the holes. And I laugh because I'm, I'm saying this now as a, as a grown woman, when I remember growing up, my parents always saying, do you want that hole patched on your jeans? Or, you know, did you pay extra for those holes or things like that? Um, so stay away from anything that's too trendy in terms of denim that, that won't translate in a work setting. I mean, and again, we've talked about how easy these are to pair with our blazers throughout the week. We love the blazers. And then I want to talk about <laughs> pants quickly. I'm kind of going back into um, professional clothing here again, outside of casual Friday. But I wanted to talk about these because, and again, raise your hand at home if you're with me. I mean, we're kind of used to the athleisure attire from being able to work from home on Zoom meetings, or maybe we're only getting dressed from the waist up. I mean, we've seen a million of those horror stories on the news about someone sitting in front of a mirror and then you can tell that they're in their pajamas or something and they get called out on live TV or something. So if you're in an instance where you do want to wear, you know, dressier pants or, or something like that or whatever, um, there is a way to do that and still be professional and comfortable too. So I pulled these faux leather leggings for you because I think the color is really, really beautiful. And again, going back to just being able to still style it with different pieces here. And then also these, I wish, I wish you could all feel these. They're so comfortable. They feel like leggings, but these are dress pants. And I don't know if you feel the same way that I do about dress pants. Anytime I would wear them, I felt like they were stuffy, and I couldn't wait to get out of them at the end of the day, or like I'd call them hard pants just because they weren't comfortable. Um, but this is great. These ones have the elastic waistline here, so we're not fussing with any zips or buttons as well. Julie, is there um, a, a pant silhouette that you would suggest that would help elongate the leg? 
Elongate the leg. I would definitely, I mean, if you're into it, try something a little bit higher waisted because that's just mm -hmm. going to help elongate the silhouette. Um, and in, in both cases, I think I would urge you to try out a tapered style and then try out something that is a little bit wider leg, like this one that we had seen as well. And this one is also high waisted too. Okay. What about leggings in the workplace? Leggings in the workplace. Okay. So I would say proceed with caution. <laughs> uh, um, I know that we are all very used to wearing leggings right now. Um, we all love them. Um, that being said, there are specific leggings that can translate as a stocking, for instance. So maybe it is a layering piece. If you are wearing leggings and it is something that you are allowed to wear in the workplace, definitely make sure that you were checking them over for sure. And, and I'm, again, this is my own experience. I have gone out wearing leggings and not realized that they are sheer <laughs> or see-through. Um, so again, check your leggings in different lighting and then just make sure, especially if they are like a darker color, make sure that there's no lint or, or um, loose threads or things like that. Again, it doesn't hurt to check your company policy though. Okay. Hi, and then there's, a, there's oh. a question in French. Is it okay if I jump in just because it's been asked two or three times already? Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Of course. Okay. Hi. okay so um, I have a question about um, hiding part of the mid range. So somebody is talking about maybe a, a little bit of a belly or how do we go about minimizing the aspect of it? Sure. That's a great question. Um, so this kind of goes back to silhouettes and then the fit of the piece that you're wearing. So if the, if the midsection is something that you wanna hide, maybe try out something that, you know, has a band that's gonna fall right under your waist um, that has a peplum. If that's not something that you feel comfortable with, try one of maybe an oversized blazer to be able to button it up. Um, and then again, just making sure that the, the fit is really comfortable for you, because again, that's going to, to really help in, you know, when we're playing at our clothes and moving around and feeling comfortable. Okay, thanks. So if you give me two seconds, I'll just translate in French of <laughs> the best that I can. Sure, thank you. Okay, alors juste pour justement peut-être un peu camoufler euh, l'apparence d'un ventre un peu plus prominent, um, on, on disait de peut-être mettre un, 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 un haut qui va avoir une bande justement à la taille, mais plus une bande élastique qui va peut-être mettre un peu plus l'accent euh, euh, ailleurs, même s'il si y a une bande qui est sur le ventre, comme le top qu'elle a montré qui était un petit peu plus brillant, ou un veston qui, euh, qui donnerait de la place pour pouvoir le boutonner, tout en s'assurant bien sûr qu'on est quand même confortable, mais qu'on peut peut-être le prendre une taille plus grande pour nous permettre de boutonner le veston. So I hope that answers it. Thank you. Of course, and I will just add on, on that as well, I, I apologize, I should have mentioned it earlier, um, is, you know, dresses or silhouettes that have the crossover as well. So I don't know if we can see that, um, but that is also great for, um, and like ruching on the side for drawing the eye away. Donc, oui. peut-être quelque chose de plus portefeuille, euh, comme elle montrait, qui peut, qui peut euh, se croiser par-dessus, qui va enlever l'accent sur le ventre. Great. Thank you, Chantel. Um, there was a question about um, someone is suffering from chronic pain, so they're looking for um, clothing that's the least restrictive and easier to move around with. So would you recommend fabrics that have more stretch or are kind of less structured? What would you say? Definitely. I mean, structure is going to be a huge, huge component of that. Um, and there's also pieces that, again, we can we can challenge ourselves with and and it still be very comfortable. So maybe it's something such as, you know, a turtleneck sweater like this, where not only is the fabric going to keep you comfortable, but you're still going to have mobility with it. And maybe this kind of speaks to this type of dress pant as well. And, and or even the wide leg ones, where it's a little bit less restrictive and not um, so tight and, and on your skin. Okay. 
Thanks. I think we're going to chat on outerwear and accessories, and there's a couple questions coming yes. in to do with that. So, perfect. <laughs> okay, it. let's do it. Outerwear. <laughs> I have to laugh at this because I'm sure my husband is like wishing that I didn't have a closet full of jackets <laughs> such as this one, for instance. But I, I wanted to pick one of my boldest jackets for you because outerwear is such a crucial aspect in our professional wardrobes, especially in order to take and, and be able to take risks as well. So have fun with your outerwear. It's kind of it's nice because outerwear can be kind of non-committal. We don't have to wear it the entire day. And, you know, have, so have fun with the colors and the prints and the textures for sure. Um, I had mentioned sort of one of those long line blazers as well. Uh, so this is the one that I was referring to. So it's this beautiful yellow color, but again, my favorite word, reimagine. So how can this jacket be reimagined? Well, right now we're all still I, I am speaking for everyone across Canada. We're all still wearing our winter coats. So right now we could actually, because of the, the weight of this, this jacket, we could utilize this as a blazer, for instance, and wear it inside. And then come, you know, spring and summer when it's a little bit warmer, we can have this as an actual piece of outerwear. So another aspect that I that I wanted to point out is perhaps you don't feel fully confident in, in injecting a lot of prints and colors into the rest of your pieces. That is totally fine. Try it out with your outerwear. So for instance, we have this beautiful floral trench coat here. Now the, the print is bold for sure, but there's a lot of neutral colors happening as well. So just for funsies, I wanna to put together an outfit for you. Uh, I'm gonna grab a bright blouse here, and then we're gonna go full pattern play with our houndstooth skirt. And we're professional, but we're having a lot of fun. Well, I'm having a lot of fun anyways. But again, I mean, this could all be, you could transition this out for, you know, your faux leather skirt here with the pleats. But again, it's a great way, this outerwear is a great icebreaker, especially if you're in a new environment. The amount of times that I've been stopped and heard, your jacket's so cool. It's, it's a great, like I said, it's a great icebreaker and a great way to have fun, inject that personality where maybe if you don't feel confident in doing it in the rest. There's a lot of love for that trench coming in. Yes. <laughs> and I, I think another good point about outerwear is it's often your first impression when you arrive at an interview or at a job opportunity, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's okay. We have five more minutes, Julie, so I want to, you to get to your okay. last tip. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I'm just going to quickly go over accessories because I know there's a lot to cover um, and thank you all so much for sitting through this. i um, going to quickly talk about, again, reimagining those pieces with scarves. This one's a little bit heavier, so it could be utilized as a shawl similar to a sweater or maybe you have, you know, a monochromatic outfit that you just want to add a little bit of fun, add a, add a thinner scarf to it. Um, belts. Belts are another great easy and quick way to update a look. I'm gonna pull out this dress again. So we'll see this floral dress actually comes with its own tie belt here. And what I'll often do is remove those. I mean, keep them for sure, uh, but I'll remove them and just simply add my own here. So then we can kind of see that it's just elevated the look in a completely different way and allowing us to have fun with it. Um, don't underestimate the power of simple jewelry as well. We talked about, you know, the rules of mixing and matching prints and patterns. The greatest thing right now is there's no rules. I mean, we can simply layer the silver and the gold if we'd like, if everyone can see that here. But again, what I just wanna say with accessories is make sure that you're picking pieces that aren't taking away from your duties. I have certainly worn um, bracelets that have caused holes in coworkers' shirts. And I'm so sorry if they're out there, if they're listening. Uh, and um, footwear is really important as well. So again, I talked about how it feels to be uncomfortable in those shoes and be walking like a baby gazelle by the end of the day. I mean, if you wanna wear stilettos and you can do it, that is cool, good on you. I've done it before and it's so uncomfortable. Um, but what I wanna say is there's alternatives. So there's really cool footwear that we can have 
in different heel heights too. This one is obviously flat. Grips are very important. And if you are wanting something that does have a bit of a heel, choose something that has kind of that bulkier, chunkier heel, because this is going to provide you a little bit more durability throughout the day as well. And same thing, this is a great place for us to be able to inject um, that personality into our professional wardrobe. I mean, again, these are very neutral colors that are going to be easily paired with what's behind me. And then finally, quickly, handbags. How many of you have been, you know, in that situation where you've got six different bags because your shoes are in one and you're carrying your lunch in the other and your portfolio and everything? So just be prepared. It is okay because larger bags are coming back in style. So if you have something like this for, for work, it has two different handles, which is going to be great. That's very uh, going to be good for your back, but then you can store your lunch in there, any work papers that you might have, um, shoes. I often change my shoes when I am um, heading to a place, and so to be able to have that option to house it all, this is just going to help with your organizational aspect, allowing you to show up and be chic and professional and, yes, organized. That's key. <laughs> Uh, lots of accolades coming in, Julie, thanking you for your tips. Lots of love for the pink bag. Um, there was a question and about, um, do you know about an ideal footwear for someone who has flat feet that would be comfortable but still stylish? Definitely. Um, you know what I would recommend actually starting with, and maybe it's not necessarily the the actual shoe um, is going to be the insoles. So if if that is something that you've tried out, you can get ones with different arch supports, which is fantastic. And then sometimes, I mean, it, it's hard to say because I don't know what, what you're going to personally feel is super comfortable, but if you do have a shoe such as this one, for instance, I mean, we can see that it does have a bit of an arch, so definitely look out for that. And if there's a way for you to be able to make it more comfortable, inserts are a great fantastic way to go and then again just looking for that overall durability in the heel height um i mean i probably wouldn't recommend a four inch stiletto on that aspect okay um i think we're, we're running out of time so i'll pass it back to our friends at dress for success to to help us wrap up 